Hello again, everyone. In this technical analysis of the stock market weekend update, we're going to take a look at the S&P 500, both daily and weekly charts, and one of my the key indicators I look at on a daily basis, the McClellan Oscillator, and then check in on what happened with energy uh, this week, and Friday especially, and uh, gold. That's why I called this, you know, this video gold needs to. Well, gold needs to put up or shut up. It's time for gold to make its move or roll over and go the other way. All right, so let's take a look here at the S&P 500. Uh, very compressed trading in here. And again, you know, I know somebody was questioning uh, about, you know, Joe, what are you saying when you're saying compressed? Are you talking about the average true range? You know, what are you talking about? Now, when I say it's compressed, I'm visually looking at simply the high and low for the day, the trading range for the day on the bar. You can see it's compressed. So we're visually talking about like this is a day that I would call. Well, here's what I'd look at and say, OK, OK, what is the difference between the high and low? It's about 12 something, 12.37. And if I go over here and look at this one, what's the difference in here? It is well, it's about. 13 something. OK, yeah, right. So, yeah, 13 something. So this is what I would say, because it's this this day, the week ago Friday is narrower. I mean, this was like 10 point something, if I remember correctly. So I would say this is the narrowest range day of the last four days. This is what I'd call an NR uh, narrow range day four NR four. OK. And when I get over and I look at and I'm looking at and I'm looking at days relative to like seven day periods. This is what I call a WR7. OK, now this isn't these codes and these names, the nomenclature aren't my creation. These are things I learned from Linda Ratchke years ago. And she got from another gentleman, which the name is uh, eluding me right now. Uh, I think it's Toby Cradle. I just can't remember his name anyway. I had his book um, and uh, it came out in the early 90s. And he was talking about the, the cycling of the compression and expansion, etc. And it's something that I have followed and watched ever since. So we're getting some compression in here. We're going to get a move. We didn't get much of a move on Monday. It kind of you know popped up and didn't go anywhere. We got a reversal candle in here on Tuesday. I, that's what's caught my eye. Now, it's not a huge one, but it's a definite reversal candle. And it's right at where I'm projecting to be the high of minor wave two, where we got a reversal candle at the top of intermediate wave two. We got the a nice big reversal candle at the top of wave A of intermediate wave two. So this is very interesting to me. Let's take a look at the weekly chart. When you look at the weekly chart, look at the back to back weeks we got in here. We haven't seen this kind of compressed trading range on back to back weeks like this since all the way back over here the last two weeks of December. OK, and then what did we get? We got an explosion to the upside. It was a continuation of the trend. So here we are snuggling underneath this long term trend line that was broken. It's two year trend line that was broken uh, back here. Definitely broken here by closing below on uh, March 23rd. But in intra week, it was closed uh, here on the week ending of February 9th uh, or broken. And we actually closed slightly below it there. Uh, but anyway, since this March 23rd, look how we've just kind of we've just been chopping and we pulled back to it and we kind of pulled back to it again a little bit here on the week ending May 11th. And then we've just kind of tightened up in here. So watching to see now, I think this coming week is going to be very critical. Now it's going to be just a four day week. I'm looking to see is this thing going to roll over? And the other thing, uh, let's take a look at one of the indicators here on, uh, that I watched the McClellan oscillator. The really, this is telling us the market is dead neutral right now, but it's coming from a extremely overbought uh, condition and it's breaking this trend line in here which could be a sign that a breakdown is starting. So watching that, no guarantees, but it is something I'm watching right now to see what kind of follow through uh, do we get. OK, let me pull up XLE. Uh, this is a little bit of an update from last week. Um, I believe I talked about this setup that we had up here at this major resistance area. Uh, we had this Harami uh, candlestick pattern in here, which was bearish, 
But on Monday, we didn't get the break to the downside that I was looking for. We actually broke to the upside. But look what happened on Tuesday. Major bearish reversal candle. And then we got the follow through to the downside and breaking very, very hard in here. It looks very much like this kind of a break that's happening. You know, so the real question is, what kind of move to the downside are we going to get? Are we going to get this falling off the cliff type move here? Or are we going to get this, you know, slow chopping uh, type move? I say slow, but it's slower than what we got here in uh, you know, February uh, type of move that we had in 2017. So right now, it sure looks like and is acting like it's coming down hard, uh, just like it did in late January into February. All right, so that's energy. Well, what was causing that? Well, oil dropped over $3 a barrel on West Texas Intermediate on Friday, and you could see USO dropped 61 cents. So to me, I've been looking for a five-way sequence. I thought there was a decent chance this fifth wave would get to the top of this uh, uh, trend line up here parallel to this trend line here uh, connecting waves two and four but it didn't quite get there and now it's breaking down hard if it breaks this trend line I think this move is over and we'll watch to see how it develops um, in terms of further corrective action all right so that's oil and then gold yes we're waiting on gold now I do think the time for gold is now uh, you know, we've got a, a pattern in here, an Elliott wave pattern that I see that, you know, I'm expecting, I'm expecting one more big move like this up here uh, before a further major move to the downside in gold. And right now we've got this one move here and we've got this move here, A and B. And this B move was a flat, a three, three and a five. So right now I'm looking at and saying, OK, we got a five wave move. You know, we've got a nice little reversal candle bottom down here. Let me go back to my mouse and right here. And we got a nice move up and need to see this break this trend line and go. OK, and if it doesn't, if it comes down and breaks this low in here, let me zoom in. We break this low. I think that's very negative and I think there's a good chance the whole thing is going to break down. So that's why gold needs to move to the upside in here and uh, needs to uh, put up or shut up. <laughs> All right, that's it for this weekend. Hope everyone's having a wonderful weekend. Uh, if you felt like the video was helpful, hit the like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you don't subscribe yet. And if you could think of someone who would benefit from this video, share the video with them. Uh, if you want to get more insight, education, trade ideas, become an insider member. Just click on the image on the screen and head over to joehenches.net. All right, everyone, have a great uh, rest of the holiday weekend here in the United States. And if you're outside the U.S., uh, you got a little bit of weekend left, hopefully, and uh, have a great Monday.